Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching Silicon Inc. and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the seals from the noise. We are live in Las Vegas for ServiceNow, Knowledge15, or hashtag No15. And I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. And our next guest is Lance Nelson, Director of Service Man Management at Career Education Corp. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you. Thank so you. first, tell us what uh, your company does and, and then we'll talk about why you're here and some of the things that you're working on. Great, so uh, Career Education is a uh, online uh, actually, it's not even online. It's a ground, brick and mortar, for-profit education company. So we have approximately 50 schools across the country, and we provide online education for people like us, just regular, regular working folks, so not the traditional 18-year-old, but more the 30-year-old, 35-year-old working yeah, professional. Retraining. Yeah, yeah, just getting a new degree, you know, another opportunity, or they're already doing the work, they just want the degree. So that's what we specialize in. So is in. cloud and DevOps and Node.js some of the most downloaded courses, whereas yeah. data science must be booming. Yeah, we have an awesome <laughs> program, so come to one of our classes, you'll really enjoy it. So um, online, uh, I'm just a huge fan of online learning because I just think it's a game changer. I think the MOOCs trend's going to be, going to change education. It's probably be disrupted as much as healthcare and others. I mean, I'm so excited. I mean, at Stanford University, when they offered the computer science course online, they had such an amazing amount of people taking the classes. Mm -hmm. They kind of scratched their head and said, man, what do we do with our other business model? That's work that we make money from. Yeah, right. So, what are some of the dynamics in, in, um, in education and why service now and why, sure. what's the service management challenges that you face? Uh, for education, it's no different than any other business. You have departments that have processes, they, they have ticketing, or, you know, they have work that they do, they use email. And then IT is no different as well. We have a big, strong uh, development team and service desk and you know, we have infrastructure, network, server. So like any other company in any other industry, we're no different. Uh, so ServiceNow for us uh, provides us a, uh, a robust application case management for our ticketing for our, for our service desks. That's fundamentally what it does, but it also does a lot for our business areas. So for HR, facilities, and we're, we're bringing service now to all of the non-IT groups. So wherever we can retire a tool, wherever we can get away from email, wherever we can uh, you know, just provide a better service delivery. So talk about the numbers, students, how many campuses, sure. is it remote, is it all online, do you go out to the universities, is the geography involved, is it centralized? Give us the quick t topology <laughs> of, <laughs> of schools. Yeah. So the day in the life. So we're yeah. corporate, our corporate headquarters is actually in the Chicago south suburbs of Schaumburg. And we have about a uh, oh, few thousand employees that are based out of there. And then the rest of us are, are in all the, the, the schools and you name the state, we probably have a school there. You know, we have culinary, we have, we have health, we have you know, even, even education, IT, and all the other uh, standard uh, career um, courses. And the, uh, our makeup is primarily 50-50 split between ground and online. So we have two really large divisions that are focused only on online. So it's about 25,000 students uh, just for that. And then the other uh, the 25,000 students are the brick and mortar, you know, going to a culinary school or they're going to a health school. So it's pretty much like a normal work environment these days, pretty much virtual workforces in some cases. That's People right. are out in the field, outside the firewall, if you will, mobile. <laughs> um, what are some of the things that you guys were doing before ServiceNow and what did ServiceNow do with you guys, and what was the outcome that you saw with? Well, we were we we implemented back in 2009, so it's been a while for us. And we uh, we were using an internal uh, tool, and we were just looking to to save a little cost and provide some flexibility and do something for our HR group. That was probably the driving force for us to even look at uh, ServiceNow or even some other tool. So we implemented actually HR first, and then our IT side. Um, and then uh, we quickly realized the benefit of the workflow and all the opportunities that ServiceNow has. And so we were looking to, to uh, expand it. That's pretty much my mantra is to retire tools and to get rid of email, make things more transparent and just, just an, empower our business to actually, because they're doing the same things IT does. You know, they have the same needs. They provide service, they provide workflow, they got, but they usually use email or they buy some other tool. 
So if I can replace the tool, I can I can improve the service, then ServiceNow is where I where I turn to go. So a big part of the education business, if I can call it that, is is scaling up now and reaching people that you know maybe can't afford it or don't have access, um, you know, or just you know new ways to be educated. Right. How has this sort of process management changed, supported the scale that you're trying to achieve in your business? Presumably you're trying to scale like you know, every business, but yeah. how, maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, one of the things we did do, this is not quite uh, directly related, but we, uh, we originally had our own ticketing tool for our students, and we, this year, we, we actually uh, transitioned that to, to ServiceNow as well, and the students don't even know it. So we took the same interface, made very little changes to it, and now it's actually bringing the, the, the tickets to the, the tool. So now we have better visibility onto the, uh, what's going on in our, in our actual core business. Before it was a separated item, we had no idea what was going on in our student environment when we started talking about problems or change management or any of those other factors. But from a cost uh, perspective, you know, we were just looking to add efficiencies, mostly for our faculty. So they're, they're at home users, they're not in a traditional work environment. So you know, supporting an at home user that's really not really connected to your corporation, you know, so to speak, uh, it was a big was a big factor. But but again, our students are now using ServiceNow. They just don't know it. We haven't branded it. It just it, to them, it's just a ticket and a receipt and a notification. So we've done some improvements uh, for that environment. How about how about AppDev? Uh, you use an app, app creator? What are you doing? What's going on uh, in your application you development environment? Uh, that's You're great. laughing here. Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> I could spend all day on that one. So, so for us, we we do uh, do a lot of custom apps. So we spend a great deal of time developing something to improve our whether it's the service desk, whether it's our tech support, whether it's our our ground IT groups. You know, we we want to uh, make sure they are aware of what's going on in their environments. We build them apps to be more specific to their area, so they're not going to those standard work areas like uh, 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 the uh, incident tickets or the request tickets. They have an application now for just their stuff. So that way they know what's going on, they can create tickets for their areas and they can address it. So we, we build other apps for our business areas too. So they have their own, like our bookstore operations. We provide a lot of course materials for our, for our, for our students. So they have a really big uh, process for databasing books, data warehouse, they got to they store them, ship them. So we built them an app to, to manage all of their workflow and processes. So, and they even have their own uh, ticket uh, prefix. So, so an INC ticket per incident. I don't know how deep you guys want to go in this. No, but, let's go deep. But, okay. but the uh, INC for a ticket. We were talking is, about asynchronous before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <no>. Sockets. <laughs> Socket layers. Web uh, sockets. Uh, so, so, uh, so, the, so a WOW ticket actually has a WOW number to it. So we have a way to, to, to create a WOW ticket. They, they handle it internally. We do the same for our tech support tickets. So those, are, those have TS ticket numbers. So those route only to tech support. And if we want to go to the IT side with a TS ticket, I'm going really into the weeds, they they'll will convert that to an INC ticket. So anyway, it's just a So I gotta I gotta ask the question because you can micro target the the request. So I gotta ask the question, we've been following ServiceNow for many years, but but they always say, Oh, it's easy and that's you know, it's easy, easy. Tell me what that means to you, because you're in the you're a customer. Right. What's right. easy about it, or is it not easy? Be, you know, you say, that's not easy. Of course it's easy. They're, they say it's easy, so it's easy. What's yeah. the truth? Tell I should us. have my developer with me to tell you how easy it is, but uh, it, no, I, mean, I mean, everything's there. Nothing's really easy. It's all relative, well, well, but I mean, the, ease well, of use I, is I critical. I do have a good response to that. So, so my, uh, again, another mantra is that we don't train anybody. So, so we don't train our, we don't train no, our end manual, users. No manuals. We don't train our, <laughs> our IT friends. We don't train our business people. We want it to be so intuitive that it's, it's that easy from a customer perspective. So whether you're yeah. the end user, whether you're an IT professional, there's no training required. So it doesn't matter what application you're talking about, it should be that, it should be that easy. So, so the other part of that question is uh, from a, how easy is it? I, am, uh, I spend a lot of time kind of dreaming up things that we can do with it. What can we do to improve the, the end result? And when you do that, the more stuff you do, the more you have to support. So, so the other side of the easy is, we're building this 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 castle, and you know, at some point, you're going to spend a lot of time keeping your castle painted and making sure that the, the windows are. So on open. one hand, you get goodness in the ease of use, yeah. enablement. You get creative, create some stuff, and then I'm it's like, creating a lot of work for my admins. So we are getting busier. So, but that brings. But it's the still next. easy. It's just busy, right? 
Well, I mean, hopefully the people are in the castle doing business, having fun, learning yeah. in your case. So, but that brings up the next level of cloud agility, seeing more and more stuff hitting the market in terms of innovation. Um, they have to build more goodness in the platform. That's right. So what do you see for tooling? Is it automation a big deal? I mean, what are some of the things that, that naturally come after the, oh, well, happiness, oh, let's go build. Lego yeah. blocks, you build a castle. In this yeah. case, Yeah, we're you know. always building new wings to our castle, so. So uh, what about, what's the tooling? What helps you manage it better? Because then that, your, other, your opportunity becomes your challenge. Right, right. So what's right. some of the things you, that they offer? Well, we go, you know, the, the, I think where you're going with that is that tool replacement is, is a big one. So there's a lot of cost for tools, so we have, Every tool is like $100,000. So, so whether it's a telecom tool, whether it's an infrastructure, infrastructure tool. Uh, so if we can retire tools, you know, that's, that helps. But we just uh, are constantly trying to, to just, uh, just grow the application and, and, and just make it easier for the end users. I, I'm, a, I'm really all about service management. You saw it in my title. And you know, I want a new employee to be onboarded and not have to know a guy. So in Chicago, you got to know a guy, right? So, yeah. so, 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 guy get you that. Yeah, so I don't want you to know a guy. You should be able to go into an organization and not know anybody and be able to get onboarded and get your things and know where to go, or not even have to know where to go. You yeah. just go one place, one, one, one store to shop, and, and, and it's just that easy. You want to make it painless and an easy transition. So. What about your skill set? You talked about developing apps, and increasingly you're developing apps in service now for the business. How has that shifted your skill sets within your application development team? And what are you looking for? What's the kind of profile of a person that you're looking for? Uh, that's, a, that's also a good question. So, you know, service, service now admins are uh, hard to come by. So you, most companies probably provide their own training. They build them within their own infrastructure teams or app dev teams. And the, uh, so we have, uh, for us anyway, we, we have always had one, usually one hardcore developer type, and then we have an infrastructure type. So I'm not quite answering your question directly. Though. Well, okay, but you got a, you got a full stack developer, yeah. right? But you don't need a full stack developer to develop apps in service now. Right. At least that we're, that's what we're told, and I that's right. presume it's true. That's right. right? So it's, it's a, it's a, you know, a three-tiered thing. So you got to have a, somebody that knows service management, you have to have somebody that knows infrastructure, kind of knows how IT works, and then, and then that's your infrastructure people. And then you need to have somebody that has the development chops. So there is some SQL, there's some, you know, you do have to know some type of programming because it's a discipline. You don't just, like a cowboy, build something and then expect it to work great. You got to QA it, you got to test it. You have to know how to release products. So similar skill sets that, uh, of your normal application development. Absolutely, but, but with the infrastructure side. So you're connecting to other people's tools, you're, you're developing things, you're integrating with, uh, I mean, everybody outsources these days. So you got to you got to be able to connect to other companies. Okay. So then, printers. what's different from an application development standpoint is that they're more productive. Um, they can develop more. It's 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 better code. Um, all yeah. of the above, none of the above. <laughs> can you share any metrics or? Any yeah, I, that one's a tough one. So I just all I can tell you is those guys are really really busy, and they're and and I annoy them to to no end about <laughs> things I want them to do. <laughs> so so yeah, from a. They, they're not hurting for work, so I don't really have metrics about what their productivity is or, uh -huh. or, or whatever, but they, it's, it's like the field of dreams. If you can dream it, they yeah. can come, and you just, they're just, I, I've been talking to all kinds of folks around here in the conference, and everybody has the same thing. There's a 500 things they want to do, but the, you know what, realistically, they can only do 10 of those things this year. What's Maybe the vibe of the show? You mentioned you talked to a lot of folks. We've been talking to a lot of practitioners here. What are your peers out there like, and what's the vibe here for the people who aren't here we're here in the cube, we're in the big stage here, in the center of all the action. Um, a lot of stuff going on. It's got a good, kind of mellow, but really, really upbeat. Right. It seems like a happy conference. A lot of people in numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. multiple people from multiple, com same company. What's your, what's your take on the vibe? Explain to the folks out there what's going I, on here. I think the biggest thing that I, this is my fourth conference, um, so I'm certainly not a veteran. There's people who've been here for 10, you know, 10 of them, you know, I'm sure they have badges for it. But uh, the thing that I appreciate about this is even if you're talking to a competitor, everybody is sharing. So, so you're, you're talking to people in like industries or different industries. Everybody's not afraid to talk about what they're doing, their challenges that they've had, and uh, just the sharing and the, the willingness to talk about what their deep problems are and, and just provide insight that, uh, to other companes or other groups. So Do you guys I, share I, security threats? With other companies, <laughs> yeah, we know we keep. That's the conversation stuff. I was just having at RSA. <laughs> yeah, no, so so the uh, so not anyway, yet. It's nice. It's Obama nice. Obama may it. make you, and the president says, you know, openly have to share. Yeah, no, but sharing culture is here. It's a lot of open yeah. source DNA. Exactly, exactly, and there's lots to learn. I mean, there's just so much 
sharing, and nobody knows everything, so it's really good to hear uh, some of the uh, some of the things that other people are experiencing. How has ServiceNow changed your business? And if you can share some metrics around that, that'd be fantastic. Great. Uh, I don't know if I can give you some metrics, but I can tell you it's more of the water cooler metric. So, so what ServiceNow does is it, it actually kind of bonds IT to their business areas. So before we had our own applications, we were separate. The thing with, with ServiceNow is, is that uh, now people are coming to me that are not part of IT saying, hey, we've got this workflow that we want you to solve for us, or can, you, can it do that? And so we have conversations. So I think IT is becoming more of a, a partner. It, it is anyway in, the, in, in most companies. But you're companies. on the proactive side, so you're actually in the business process improvement versus an afterthought, hey, go provision this right. for me. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. So, so, so to me, the, that's one of the biggest benefits that ServiceNow gives us is it, it makes IT more a partner and yeah. less of a less of a an outsource function. Well, in your right? business, you get the edge of the network is the human component. I mean, the Internet of Things is humans are things in the eyes of computers, right? Right. So right. you got a mobile device. I'm traveling or mobile. I want to learn. You got to manage that, right? Right. You gotta, right. If it's down, it's not being serviced. Right. It's lost business. So you can actually probably say direct revenue is key, right? Sure. Sure. So what so what advice would you give your peers out there? So share. Uh, with folks who are watching, who are, who are maybe putting the toe in the water with service management, have the old ways, you know, provisioning gear, old apps, they're getting a lot of pressure from the top line, more revenue, getting more integrated to the business units, which is the tr big trend. What would you say to them in terms of advice, mindset, uh, approach, <laughs> training, <laughs> yeah. education? <laughs> I, I guess uh, what I would say is just uh, make sure that you have all your areas of business represented in the conversation. So, so you know, I, I'm not one to go after, you know, a committee for every decision you got to make, but, but you should definitely make sure that, you're, that you have all of the constituents in the room making these decisions. And, and some of the uh, development uh, coaching I would give is be careful of customizations. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't follow my own advice, so I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so I think I can do everything better than anybody else, just like most people, so well, every, it's hard. Just do one-offs, so it's yeah, great. Yeah, you know? yeah, just one more, one more, <laughs> one more. But uh, you know, try to stay away from customizations. There's a reason it was built the way it was. You know, don't, don't. Uh, and, then, and then the other thing is we're all doing the same thing. So, so it doesn't matter the organization, the company, we all have incident tickets, yeah. we all have service catalog. Everybody's doing the same thing. Don't reinvent the wheel. The wheel has been invented. Take what's already out there and, and leverage it. Don't don't think your your catalog is the next big whiz. You know, it's, it's there's awesome. plenty out there to look at. Use those examples and and uh, mirror them as best you can. And I think you'll be golden. You know, Lance, it's been a great pleasure having you on the cube. I'll give you the last word. Share with the folks out there. What's the most exciting thing at this conference that you've seen so far um, that you're jazzed up about? What's what's going on here? What do you like? What do you what do you look at? What do you see that's uh, that's looking good for you right now? Well, you know, I like, uh, I, I came to the conference and I always go, it's just looking to see what's the next thing that's coming out there. There's a lot of applications that are, that are becoming available, so in Fuji and, and you know, even, even beyond. So, so just learning more about what's out there and understanding what's possible. It just it, it sets me for the next year on what I want to go after for, for the, next, uh, the next big project. Set so. the agenda. Exactly, exactly. All right, Lance Nelson, Director of Service Management at Career Education Corporation. Great mission, congratulations on your success. Uh, education online, <laughs> physical, virtual, it's all converging. Great stuff, thanks for joining us. This is theCUBE bringing you the data here from ServiceNow Live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>